Okay, finding vertical and horizontal intercepts of this quadratic function. So understanding what they're asking is an important step on this. When they're saying vertical intercepts, they're asking where does this graph intersect the vertical axis, the y-axis. So another way to say that same thing is vertical intercepts just means the same thing as the y-intercept. All right, so y-intercept, if we think about getting to any point on the y-axis, you would go either maybe up, maybe down, but you wouldn't move left or right or else you'd move off of the y-axis. So for every y-intercept or vertical intercept, we should know that x is always going to equal 0. So this is actually fairly easy, hopefully, to find. What we want to do is we have an x value and we have a function. We're going to replace each of the x's in that function with, in this case, 0. So this works out to 0 plus 0 minus 2, which is going to be negative 2. So as an ordered pair, that goes 0 for your x value, negative 2 for your y value. All right, next let's think about the horizontal intercepts. So horizontal intercepts means the same thing as x-intercepts. There are some different ways to ask the same question. X-intercepts typically means an ordered pair. However, we could ask this as asking what are the zeros or what are the roots. Those all mean the same thing. They're asking the same question. Well, all of those occur whenever you either maybe move to the right or move to the left, but you can't move up or down or else you'd move off of the horizontal axis, the x-axis. So that tells us that our y value always has to be 0, or with function notation we can say f of x is going to be 0. So in our case what we want to do is replace 0 in on the left hand side where f of x is, and we get this quadratic equation. Well this quadratic equation already has 0 on one side, so let's see if we can factor it. So to factor this, I'm going to utilize the AC method. So we're going to want to figure out what is A times C. And I'm going to ignore the fact that that's negative. That's going to tell us other information in a second. So we have 3 times 2 makes 6. So I'm going to list that off to the side. And then I'm going to list all the different ways to factor 6. So 1 times 6 or 2 times 3 are our choices. All right, from here, what I want to do is I want to look at the sign on that constant. The sign on that constant is negative, so I want to pick out the pair that subtracts to make that middle coefficient. So it's important it's negative. 6 minus 1 makes 5, but 3 minus 2 makes 1. So we're going to go with the choice 1 and 6. Okay, for the AC method, um, this feels weird if you haven't seen this before, but what we're going to do is we're going to bring that first term down. We're going to strategically rewrite that middle term using 1x and 6x. Those, uh, that pair that I picked off over on the side, um, we've got to use those two numbers as the coefficients. And then the minus 2 comes down as well. Now these middle two terms are now like terms. But I'm strategically splitting apart that positive 5x. So if I were to combine these middle terms back together, being that they're like terms, I have to get back to a positive 5x. So in our case, we have to be careful with the signs. We're going to have to use positive 6 minus 1. 6x is minus 1x gives us back to 5x. All right, next with the AC method, we've strategically rewritten the right-hand side with four terms. What we want to do is factor this. And factor by grouping is our friend in this case. Because we just look at the first two that we paired together. 3x squared minus 1x, and we say, what do we have in common? So we have a common factor between those two of x. If we factor out an x, we're going to be left with 3x minus 1 inside a set of parentheses. The second two, we're going to repeat this process, but I kind of know that for factor by grouping to work, 3x minus 1 is going to have to end up in this other set of parentheses. So with that, a lot of times I work backwards and I think 3x times what gives us positive 6x. So in our case, I would say 3x times positive 2 gives us positive 6x. I could redistribute, make sure that it works out to give us both these same two terms, but sure enough it will. All right, to finish up our factoring, 
let's go ahead and say 0 is going to equal, in one set of parentheses you get what's in front, the x plus 2, and then the other set of parentheses is going to be 3x minus 1, what's inside those sets of parentheses is actually a common factor now. And to finish this up, we'll go ahead and set each factor equal to 0. Treat them like separate equations and solve them down. So subtract 2 to get that solution. This other one, we're going to have to add 1 first and then subtract both, or divide both sides by 3. So x is going to equal 1 third as a second solution. All right, hope this helps out as you're working on finding horizontal and vertical intercepts.